you you did uh, Mean Streets. And what I love so much about that performance is, I mean, to me, it, it may be the best, you know, uh, non-dialogue performance I've ever seen because <laughs> it's so, it's so, um, it's actually quite frightening. I mean, you get this, this veteran who, who comes back uh, from, from Vietnam and there's, you know, this party that they're throwing for, for you. And it seems like a happy occasion. And then suddenly just that, that burst of, of violence um, where you, where you, you know, you tear down the cake and, and atta attack, you know, you go out that woman you're throwing around. Um, was that, so, uh, this is, I, I, I wouldn't, if you don't mind sharing the story of how you, cause that was something you came up with. Is that right? Well, you know, Victor Argo, who's also did a bunch of Scorsese films. Yes. Now we would talk a lot about acting. And so I, I got the part and, you know, Marty said, I want you to play this. And I said, fine. I looked at the script and it was just a guy, Jerry comes home. Uh, you know, gets drunk, you know, falls over into the cake and he's wearing a suit like the other guys. And I told Marty, I said, you know, I, I worked on it three days downtown L.A., Westlake and Six. And I said, Marty, I'm a little bit older than these guys and I would like to wear a, a uniform. He said, great. You know, just coming home from Vietnam. That was number one. Then what I've always thought about acting is you get a role and you try to make an active role out of a passive one. And so I came up with the idea that you just mentioned. And then uh, uh, I remember when the, LA, the New York Times review came out, Vincent Canby said the scene where the Vietnam vet Harry Northup comes home and uh, destroys his own homecoming is one of the most mysteriously sorrowful moments in recent American cinema. Mm. So, uh, I told Marty what I wanted to do. And he said, great. And uh, so I told him I would smash the cake, tear up the tables. And then, as you said, you know, attack this woman. And it was really, a, you know, a guy coming home from Vietnam and just, uh, you know, and the other thing, the two things I heard from Scorsese one time when he was given an interview around that time, he said, the, the guy who's going to commit mayhem is always that poor schmuck in the background that nobody's paying any attention to. It's not the guys that are joining. And the other thing was that um, Scorsese, uh, I don't know, I can't remember the other thing. Pauline Kael mentioned about how he puts things together and allows it to erupt out of its own volition. Right. And so with those, oh, oh, the other thing was that, as you mentioned, I looked at it and it was like a picnic. You know, all these guys coming in, art thou king of the Jews? I come mm -hmm. to bring all of this and that. And so I said, I'm going to turn their picnic into a nightmare. Right. And then, and then the great thing about that too was that, you know, the way Scorsese shoots and then edits, Right after that happened, you cut to the back room with Harvey Keitel, Charlie, dancing with the girl. Yes, yes. It's been attacked and it was very tender. So he has that, uh, he has that, you know, the, just the way that he puts things together, compresses things. Right, right. So, so I imagine that that dance that he has with the woman who, who then runs away from you, I imagine that came out of, out of what you had done, right? So that, that obviously wasn't in the script until you came up with the idea to, you know, bust up the party. I don't know if you would re remember or not. I don't remember that. The only thing okay. that I remember is, you know, the DP was uh, Kent Waitford. Yeah. He also saw Alice. And I told him, because he was, you know, he had a camera shaped to him, or, you know, what do you call it, belted to him. And uh, like a he was camera. followed. Yeah, pet, yeah. And, uh, so I told him, yeah. And I told him, I said, there are only two cakes. So just keep it in frame. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, that's that's such a that's such a wonderful, frightening scene. And I, I imagine you felt like what did you did you feel that this character would do that? Obviously, because of what he had been through with Vietnam. So it was sort of like a, a PTSD experience. Is that what you what you had in mind? Or well, that was the way I found it in the yeah. script. In terms of me, it was also I made a personal choice within me you know, to, uh, you know, like an objective correlative. And um, so I just, uh, you know, focused on that. Right, right. No, it's uh, uh, it's such a, such a great, such a great scene. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I want to thank all of my members on Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, head over to the link, patreon.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies for full details. Patreon is exclusive content created by me. You can also leave a donation directly to my YouTube channel by pressing the thanks link 
which you will find right below the video frame, right beside the like, comment, uh, links below. Just click the thanks link and you can leave a donation directly to my YouTube channel from there. And if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the Movies logo. You will see it floating above my head in the top left corner to your top left in just a second. Just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release one of my new episodes. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the next episode.